You may not have heard the name Phyllis Cohen, but she is the makeup maverick behind the most memorable and hypnotizing beauty editorials of all time. From the sultry, inky black eyes of Mick Jagger, the exotic sensuality of Tina Turner, to chiseling the steely cheekbones of David Bowie's character, Screaming Lord Byron, Cohen used makeup to concoct a character for each celebrity that would visually mirror their musical flair. Formerly trained in fashion illustration, Cohen's artistic eye looked upon the face as a greater canvas to be subverted and reimagined with fine brush strokes, optical illusions, and tactile materials to transform the face from a flat surface into a palpable piece of art. And it could be said, Cohen was the original beauty influencer, with many of her most provocative and pioneering creations now experiencing a digital renaissance at the hands of curious TikTokers across the globe. On this week's episode of Making Up Is Art To Do, where we speak to the most innovative creatives of the beauty realm, we introduce the legendary makeup artist that is Phyllis Cohen. Like illustration, did you see makeup as an expression of art? I really wanted to find a way to marry the illustration and the makeup together. And I was also always really into trying to see makeup as an expression of art, like real creativity and working as a painter. Because, you know, really uh, makeup is all about um, almost like copying the shadows of very beautiful women onto other women. And then that really comes from the world of painting as well, like portraiture and sculpture and the way that they chisel out the eyes and stuff like that. And the crease line, shadow under the eyebrows and all that stuff. It's, it really all comes from that. And when you arrived in London in 1982, did the melting pot of youth tribes influence the experimental makeup you were creating in collaboration with Australian photographer Robin Beach. I was just so lucky to hit London at the time where, you know, uh, a creative, like, wild surge was happening. Like, you know, punks with, like, rainbow Mohicans and, you know, they'd get on the tube and they'd be sitting next to, like, someone like my grandma. You know, I just found that absolutely fascinating. And I've always been somebody who sketched out ideas. So I would go to Robin with sketches and say, oh, you know, I kind of have this idea, this, this one. She'd say, let's do it. And we'd call up a model and they'd say, yeah. And that was very different in the 80s. People were really willing to just work on um, collaborative projects with not really much prospect of money, just for the fun of doing it. And what was the purpose of incorporating materials like jewelry wire, fabric, and even cake sprinkles into your makeup design? I'm a tiny bit on the spectrum, you know? And so, like, I will go through, like, a hardware store. And I'll see something and go, oh, my God, that'd be amazing on the face. I just have these weird sort of associations happening all the time. Sometimes you work on girls that are, like, literally like Barbie dolls. And you have to work really hard to make them interesting. In the early 1990s, Cohen's canvas expanded to embrace the entire body, achieving a claim for painting the cover art of six Pink Floyd albums on the backs of models in just eight hours. The artwork was completed through the accelerated process of layering machine cut stencils, which culminated in the creation of Cohen's present business, Face Lace. These ornate and precise latex pieces can be applied in seconds, appearing on leading celebrities across the globe and collaborating with the creators of the celebrated drama Euphoria. Was it the pre cut stencils you were using for body painting that first sparked the idea of Face Lace? That was really, um, yeah, where the sort of technical aspect of face lace came from. Because with this machine, it allowed me to do really intricate stencils. And I began to think, oh, wow, you know, maybe I could use some version of these stencils that could actually just stay on the face and do a makeup. Can you explain the process of creating a face lace design? Once I get a sort of basic shape, then it's a giant tweak-a-thon. You know, I'll just do like hundreds of versions until I get every line and curve and point and everything exactly how I want. And that's the wonderful thing about doing face lace as opposed to working on a photo shoot is that I can work like hundreds of hours on the design if I want to. And what do you consider great makeup today? It's the way you balance the different elements, whether it's the color, whether it's the blend, what you leave strong, what you leave soft, you know, the, the, all those decisions you make about where the colors go is it going to be sharp? Is it going to be soft? Is it going to be wavy? And it's a balancing of all the different elements of what you can use and the way you choose which ones you put together. 